as an avid traveler, there are a lot of places I want to see, but just not enough time to see them all. That's why I'm embarking on a new adventure, to visit as many places as I can in as little time as I can. Welcome to my In A Day series, where I take a very quick trip, highlight some of the coolest places in the country, and well, just today. The first episode in our In A Day series brings us to Denver, Colorado for my first visit to the Mile High City. Hello everyone and welcome to Adventures in Coriolis. It's a beautiful morning here in downtown Denver, Colorado. It's about 8 a.m. and I'm very excited because today starts the very first of our In A Day series and just wanted to give a little bit of background about what that means. So here lately I've really been bit by the travel bug and I just want to go out and explore as many places as I can because there are so many places left across the country and all across the world that I haven't gotten to see yet. So I thought why not feature some places that I can just go to and visit in a day and then show all of you at home how you too can visit a city in a day. You know, there are a lot of times when you may have a long layover in a city and you may be wondering what is there that I can go see, like maybe in the downtown area. So that's what this series I hope is going to do. It's going to show you some of the highlights of some of the coolest cities in the U.S. We're starting today in Denver, but I have plans to hit up some other major United States cities that I invite you to please subscribe so you don't miss any of this in a day series. It's going to be featured on the channel. So the series is called in a day because I literally only have about eight hours to explore. Now my flight did get into Denver late last night, but I didn't do any exploring last night when I got here. So this is the first I'm seeing of Denver as you're seeing it with me. It's very quiet so far uh, this early morning in Denver. I'm actually walking to get some breakfast. I did some research before I came. Some of the best places that folks have said that you can eat in Denver, and there is one place uh, that I'm headed to now called Snooze and AM Eatery, which is actually a Denver original. I think they have locations now all across the country, but it originated here in Denver. I'm gonna go to the original and check it out. So that's where I'm headed now, about a 15 or 20 minute walk from where my hotel was here in the downtown area. So there's a restaurant right across the street from where I am uh, as I'm walking here called Mexico City and I'll drop this interesting fact here. Denver is the second highest in elevation city in North America. The first is actually Mexico City. So interesting fact and pretty cool they have a restaurant called Mexico City here in the middle of downtown Denver. So we've made it, I'm seventh on the list to get in. Um, there's a line here on the corner waiting. There's a little patio section over here on the side too where you can sit outside. So it's now 9.15 a.m. We've had our breakfast at Snooze, which was wonderful. Had that OMG French toast and can't say enough good things about it. Had good service there. Good food. So check it out. It was about, you know, maybe a 20 minute wait once I got there. Uh, I did check in on their app. So, you know, just keep in mind that you are probably going to have to wait if you go there, but it is worth the wait. So now we're here at Coors Field, home of the Colorado Rockies. And this looks like it's the first base entrance. But it's right here, right downtown. You can see the proximity to the downtown area and then the field right here. Uh, Union Station, actually, the main train station, which we'll see a little later here in downtown Denver, is just behind Coors Field. So it's a very accessible stadium to the downtown Denver area. Now walking through Lower Downtown, or Lodo as they call it, um, there's a lot of bars and restaurants in this area because right across the street, right back here is Coors Field, so um, a lot of places for folks to come before and after the ball games. Uh, but you can see all the way down there, 
beautiful view of the Rocky Mountains all the way down the street there. Just a beautiful, beautiful morning here in Denver. Now walking down 16th Street into Upper Downtown. So Lower Downtown is back down this way. The 16th Street Mall is where we're gonna find a lot of the shopping here in Denver. It's a whole drag from Lower Downtown to Upper Downtown with a lot of shops, a lot of outdoor dining and things like that. So really, if you wanna think of a main drag in downtown Denver, it's 16th Street. I'm gonna continue walking down 16th and we're gonna actually head now to uh, the Colorado State Capitol building and some of the government buildings down there. There are these buses going up and down 16th Street. It's actually a free ride. You can hop on and off as it goes up and down uh, throughout 16th Street. I think that's the only place it goes, just up and down the mall here. This here is called the Outer Space. It's Denver's outdoor eating and gathering space. That's pretty cool. Some artwork over there. Uh, just a nice little place to sit outside. Uh, you know, have dinner, people watch. The 16th Avenue bus does run up and down from upper downtown to lower downtown and I did just hear it announced that it was running all the way to Union Station. So if you do find yourself up here in upper downtown and realize suddenly that you need to get down to Union Station and head somewhere else, there's a good method of public transportation that is free. Now, of course, Denver is the state capital of Colorado. So behind me here, you have the state capital here in Denver. This was opened in November of 1894 and has since served as the capital building for the state of Colorado. So this is a pretty cool view up here from the state capital. Uh, looking out to our west, you can see back there some of the Rocky Mountains, the peaks of the Rockies. And that building there just in front of us is actually the Denver District Court building. And then behind that, we'll walk down there in just a minute, but uh, it will be the U.S. Mint building. You can see the parking lot out here is marked legislators parking only reserved at all times so here's the colorado state museum we don't have time to go in there today um, it's also looks like it doubles as the legislative services building but it's right across the street here you see the state capitals here it's just right across the street here now just over here behind the u.s state capitol building is the molly brown house also known as the home of margaret brown or the unsinkable molly brown from the rms titanic of course molly brown survived the sinking of the titanic in 1912 her husband bought this house in the late 1800s for thirty thousand dollars and then it was transferred to Molly's name after his death in 1898. In the early 1900s, it was actually used as the governor's mansion since the state capitol uh, is just a little ways right over there. And then in 1926, Molly Brown returned home 
and turn this house into a boarding home. You can actually take tours of the house and the property. Uh, it is a ticketed attraction, so probably something you want to plan before your day here. Uh, but just wanted to include it here and walk by and see it. Not going to go inside or anything. So a lot of state, uh, government, and other public buildings up here in this area. Of course, the state capitol is right there. Right here you have the Colorado Supreme Court and the Colorado Court of Appeals. Right across the street over there is the Denver Public Library. And we're now headed over here to the Denver District Court. So if government buildings are your thing, uh, make sure you come to just north of Upper Downtown near the state capitol and you'll see a lot of these things that are clustered here together. Back here, just behind the courthouse, the district courthouse, is the U.S. Mint. So this is where all the bread gets made, where they make that money. And that, there is a visitor's entrance right over there, so it looks like they may give tours. Um, and knowing what I know about the D.C. U.S. buildings, you know, a lot of them give tours. So check it out if you have time. Probably don't give tours right now. We are in the midst of the pandemic. All right, so enough of the bureaucracy and the government buildings. Now we're going to head back into the downtown area and explore some more of what's down there and what you might be able to see down there on your day in Denver. So I'm just here now on 14th Street. We're about to see some Denver history because we're about to enter Larimer Square. Larimer Square is Larimer Street between 14th and 15th Street. It is the oldest commercial block in the city of Denver. So it's where the city of Denver actually started. Now, of course, Denver rose to prominence in the late 1800s as an establishment just outside the front range of the Rocky Mountains. And ever since then, it's boomed into the city that it is today. So we're gonna walk down Larimer Square and check it out. But keep in mind that it is a very historic place here in the city of Denver, so it's not to be missed when you visit the Mile High City.
So I took a little break there and a little bit of time to enjoy Larimer Square. Sat there for about 20 or 30 minutes and enjoyed a Starbucks. Speaking of Starbucks, uh, more of Starbucks in our next in a day video in the next city that we visit. I'll drop that hint here now. Stick around to the end of this video though and I'll tell you where we're headed next. Now we're gonna head north here in downtown Denver and check out more of this fabulous city. So just north of downtown Denver, there's actually uh, an entire theme park over there. Uh, it's called Aleth Gardens, I believe, but not gonna be done in a day. That would take more than a day visit, but thought it was noteworthy. So for some wayfinding here, back here is downtown, and then right up here, just northwest of that, is that theme park. So if you have more than a day, or maybe that's all you wanna do in your day, then maybe check that out. So this has all been the riverfront portion of downtown Denver, and that's all located over near 14th Street, those little bridges and things. It's a very tiny river though. So here at the intersection of 15th Street and Delgany, you'll find the Museum of Contemporary Art Denver. And this is the entrance to that right here. Just look for the bleeding heart up there, and you know that you've made it. That's pretty cool. I wish I had time to to go here and check it out. Maybe next time. It's hard to do museums and stuff when you've only got a day, right? This here is Commons Park, and it's uh, probably the northern extent of the downtown area. Once you get over here, uh, you do cross the interstate into the northern portions of Denver, but probably more the suburb areas. on the northern bank of the North Platte River, which makes up the northern boundary of downtown Denver. Look how stunning this is. Just across that road over there, you can see the theme park I was talking about. And then under the bridge, you can see Empower Field which is where the Denver Broncos play football. So just on the other side of the road over there, you can see. And then in the background, of course, you can see the Rocky Mountains. But this is incredible. From those falls over there, you can actually, from where I'm standing, you can feel the, the cool mist off of it. So it, it's a pretty good feeling. You can smell it too. It smells like a, a dirty creek, which I'm familiar with from my days growing up in Tennessee. So this is very, very nice to me. And then right up the hill here from the North Platte is the REI Co-op. So now heading back into downtown, gonna cross Millennium Bridge, known for its unique structure here in Northwestern downtown Denver. So 
something pretty cool and remarkable about this bridge is they do have these little ramps that go all the way up the stairs so that you can bring your bike up and over the bridge. That's pretty cool that the city of Denver's paid attention to, you know, the needs of back riders. Behind me here is Denver's historic Union Station, of course being landlocked. Train travel has been very important to the survival of the city of Denver. And in fact, if you fly into Denver International Airport, it is, a, I think, around 20 to 30 miles to the east of here. The most convenient method of transportation is to take the A train that runs from the airport right here to Union Station, which drops you off right in the middle of downtown Denver. Now, Denver International Airport is a hub for United Airlines, so you may have a extended layover here in Denver. Keep in mind, it is gonna be about an hour each way on the train. So budget at least two hours for travel over here to downtown and then back. But if you have a long layover, absolutely doable to come over here, see some of the things I've shown you today, uh, and hit up Denver in a day while you're here on the layover. As of 2021, at the time of filming this, it is $10.50 for each way of travel on the A train to get over to Denver International Airport. So we'll be getting back on that train in just a few hours. It's currently just past 1 p.m. here in Denver. Uh, I'll be headed back over to the airport to catch my flight. There are a lot of restaurants uh, clustered right in here, right around uh, Union Station. So if you're just looking for an option of place to eat or to find somewhere quickly to eat then I would definitely check this area out. Looks like they also have some sort of a farmers market. Uh, it's, a, it's a Saturday when I'm filming this so maybe on the weekends or something they're packing it all up now but back here in the corner at Union Station is another location of Snooze which of course is where we had breakfast this morning. This cow has a lot of interesting Denver facts on it that we can explore. Uh, for one, Denver has the nation's largest city park system with more than 200 parks within city limits, 300 days of sunshine each year, and then the Denver International Airport is the nation's largest at 53 square miles. The Denver Mint is the largest producer of coins in the world and one of only four locations in the country where corns are produced. We saw that a little bit earlier. And then the 13th step of the state capitol building on the west airway entrance is exactly one mile above sea level at 5,280 feet, precisely why it's called the Mile High City. So it is now 3.45 in the afternoon, and unfortunately that means it's time to catch the train back over to Denver International Airport. Uh, like I said earlier, expecting about a 45 minute ride over there. Uh, so I'll catch you all when we arrive to the airport. So now we've made it here to Denver International Airport. 
That means that concludes our day here in Denver. I want to thank you all so much for watching this first in a day series. There's a lot more to come. Now, I'll give my thoughts on Denver. Um, I did really enjoy coming here, as I mentioned earlier. I did come last night and spend the night and then woke up this morning and kind of gave myself six to eight hours to explore the city. And that's what I intend to do with each of the cities that I visit in this series. So what I recommend to you to come to Denver just for a day or maybe to if you have a long layover at the Denver airport to head over into the city I would say absolutely as long as you have you know around six hours that you can actually spend inside the city I'd absolutely recommend you take the trip over and uh, just explore it a little bit you know everything is sort of within close proximity to everything else it's not a, a spread out or large downtown area there's a lot of things you can see as you saw throughout my day I didn't actually go in and experience any of the museums or anything but there's a lot of sites that you can see as you just walk around so again I really hope that you enjoyed this day please if you did if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up down below let me know down in the comments what you thought and stay tuned because as I said this is a whole series so we have more to go the next video in this series I'm so excited uh, in a few weeks I'm gonna be headed out to the Emerald City does anyone know what city that's the nickname for some of you may have already got it. It's Seattle. I'm going to be going out to Seattle, Washington in a few weeks to film the second in this series. So you don't want to miss the next in a day series right here on Adventures in Coriolis. So make sure you go down below and subscribe. Thank you all so much again for watching. I got to go catch a flight back to the East Coast and I'll see you all on the next adventure.